whatever updated information we have then. Uh, so I'm going to introduce Chief Zeman. She's going to give you some information now. Chief. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Kristen Zeman. I'm the Chief of Police of the Aurora Police Department. The following is an update of the Aurora Police investigation of the workplace shooting event that took place on the city's near west side earlier today. At 124 this afternoon, the Aurora Police Department received multiple calls of an active shooter at the Henry Pratt Manufacturing and Warehouse Building located at 641 Archer Avenue. Approximately four minutes later, the officers arrived on scene and were immediately confronted by Gary Martin, a 45-year-old man armed with a handgun. The male fired upon the officers as they arrived, striking two of the four first responders. Additional Aurora police officers responded to, an, to assist and attempt to rescue the wounded officers and to render aid. As additional law enforcement arrived at the scene, they continued to report gunfire heard throughout the building. A regional law enforcement response was coordinated and several teams of officers went inside the 29,000 square foot facility in an attempt to locate and stop the shooter. Aurora officers, along with officers from Naperville Police Department, ultimately confronted the offender inside the building, at which time he fired at them. The officers returned fire, killing the offender. In total, five Aurora police officers were shot by the gunmen before this incident ended. All of the officers have been transported to area hospitals for treatment for apparent non-life-threatening injuries. No injuries to first responders from other agencies have been reported. Thus far in the investigation, we have confirmed that five employees were located deceased inside the building. We have also confirmed that one employee is being treated at an area hospital for non-life-threatening gunshot wounds. We are in the process of making notification to the victim's families and are unable to release any of their names or identifying information at this time. The investigation into the officer-involved portion of this shooting is being conducted by the Kane County Officer-Involved Shooting Task Force. Investigators from the Aurora Police Department, with the assistance of the ATF, FBI, and Kane County State's Attorney's Office, are conducting the investigation into the workplace shooting incident, which precipitated the Aurora Police response. Investigators have also obtained a search warrant for the offender's res residence in an attempt to locate any evidence which might further the investigation. The investigation also includes a search and search for and collection of any evidence at a very large crime scene at the Henry Pratt building. At the time of this press release, the Victim Notification Center provided by Aurora University is no longer active. The FBI has provided resources to victims associated with this event. For victims looking for assistance, please email auroravictimassist at fbi.gov. That's Aurora Victim A-S-S-T at FBI.gov. For anyone having information relating to this incident, please email Aurora Shooting Tips at FBI.gov. Any official updates regarding this incident will be disseminated via the Aurora Police Department's social media platforms, Twitter and Facebook. We anticipate another press briefing to be held at the Aurora Police Department at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. I want to reiterate my thanks to the officers from all over the state who responded today. In the middle of the incident, I looked around and I saw hundreds of uniformed officers ready to assist. This response by law enforcement from federal, state, and local agencies did not surprise me, but it still overwhelms me. I know how quick the response by our officers saved lives today. They took on gunfire, but they pressed on until they located the shooter. Some are recovering from their physical wounds and others are, are home safe recovering from their emotional wounds. They are true heroes and we honor them for their, their selfless service to the citizens of Aurora. But we still lost lives today and it cannot be overstated that those people did not deserve this. Their families have our support. I'll take any questions at this time. We know that he was a 15-year veteran, and information that we have uh, indicates that he was being terminated today. And did he bring a gun to the termination meeting? We don't know that. We don't know whether he had the gun on him at the time or if he went to retrieve it. We don't have that information yet. Do you have a visual initial? I do not, know. Are you aware of his criminal history at all? 
At this point, we are looking into his criminal history, and I don't have enough to share with you right now. But that's being done as we speak. Were the victims, uh, among the victims, those who were attempting to fire him? I don't know. I know that they were all employees, and I'm not sure exactly who was uh, terminating him at that time. And that's information, again, that was given to us that we still need to verify. How many I'm not sure about that. I know that it employs 200 people, but I'm not sure exactly how many people were there at the time. Do you know who made the 911 call? Multiple people from inside the building called 911. I don't specifically know who they are. We are sifting through a lot of witnesses right now and trying to put all of the pieces together um, so we get a better picture of what happened. But those, my understanding is those uh, those calls came from inside the building. Is your department all familiar with the accused shooter? Have you been to his house before, made any contact? Not that I'm aware of. We don't have that information yet. Do you believe that the first shots were fired in the meeting room where he was being terminated? I am unaware of that, if that were in the actual meeting room. I don't know the proximity. Shot outside or inside? When our officers responded, the first officer was actually struck outside of the building, and subsequently more officers responded on the scene, and then my understanding is then the, the officers were shot then inside the building. Was he shooting from a window or from a doorway? I don't know precisely where he was shooting from. Re original reports indicated that he was shooting from a window um, at the onset. How long did the full incident last? The full incident lasted approximately one hour and 35 minutes. Um, I do want to reiterate, though, during that time when we first got on the scene, that's when the shots were fired. Um, during that time, there were no shots fired while they were attempting to locate. So as more and more teams came uh, to, uh, um, to attempt to locate the, the shooter, there were no shots fired during that time. The the shots that were fired were actually into the into the incident about an hour and 30 minutes, and that's when they actually located the offender, who we believe was was hiding in the building. Gunfire was exchanged again at that time, and that's when uh, the that's when we we shot the shooter. Uh, to our knowledge, right now he had one. We found one gun, and it is a it is a Smith and Wesson handgun. Did he legally? It was he, did he legally that is what we're determining right now. We're not sure. How much ammo did he have? I don't know at this point. Right now, it's an ongoing scene, so we haven't even cleared the scene. We have our uh, evidence uh, and investigators um, still on the scene, and they are collecting all of that evidence. We'll have a better idea of that once we collect all of that. Are you going to release the officers? Uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, right now, uh, we are still, you know, there's still one that just got out of surgery, uh, one that was going into surgery at the onset of this press conference. Um, and so out of respect for their families, we're going to give them some time, and then, uh, and then we'll release that later. And same with the victims. Uh, we've identified uh, a few of the victims, but at this point, uh, we're allowing their family members um, at, you know, to, to contact one another, and we're going to give them some time before we put their names out there out of respect. So the timeline, they're shooting in the first five minutes or so, and then 90 minutes without shooting. And Correct. Okay. Remember, 29,000 square foot uh, uh, facility that the officers were going in in different teams. And as I mentioned, the officers were at the ready to go in. We had medics staged. And so we also sent in rescue task force teams so we could go in and try to locate victims. So all that was being done simultaneously. Rescue task force were going in at the same time that officers were going in to try to locate the shooter. So we had two very different missions. One uh, was for life saving and the other was uh, to, to attempt to, to find the offender. Do you know why he was being fired? I do not. I don't have any information about his history, about anything but with the company. Sorry, was he unregistered to him? We don't know that yet. That's what we're in the, in the process of determining. Aurora resident? He lives in Aurora right now, but I do not know if he's a lifelong resident. There have been several things floating around on social media in the past couple of hours. Will the police be releasing an official photograph of the shooter just to... Once, yeah, we'll, we'll, we will release that. Once we gather the information, we will release that, uh, yes. Is there any evidence that, that he planned to do this today, had advanced knowledge of a meeting with any executives there? I don't know. I, I really don't know whether this was something that he'd stated to someone. That is exactly what we're going to determine as we talk with all of the witnesses. How many locations were victims? Uh, I don't know exactly right now. Again, that's still uh, the scene is still being processed. In terms of the offender's address, uh, have you found anything yet? And what are you looking for? Out of curiosity. 
uh, the offender's address. Yes, we conducted a search warrant at the at the address, and at this time, I'm told that we didn't find anything. We were obviously looking for um, any ancillary items or any devices that he might have inside the home. And uh, from my understanding, is that uh, we didn't we didn't find anything. Did you use a bomb squad from King County to go into that home? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, from it to go into the home. I'm not certain of that. I know that the bomb squad was staged with us, but I'm not exactly sure uh, who took part in that search warrant. So, Chief, at this point, are you treating this as a, a classic workplace shooting, or are you still looking at whether or not he was targeting certain people that were overreaching? I, I, I hate that we have to use the term classic workplace shooting. Um, that pains me to do so. Um, at this time, I, I don't know. I, I Again, you know, we can only surmise, you know, with a, a gentleman who's being terminated, you know, that this was you know, something he intended to do. I, I'm not sure. Um, right now, you know, we know that he was acting alone, um, and, and that's what we're trying to determine right now is, you know, maybe to give us some clues inside, you know, into his mindset and if he had planned this or if it was premeditated in any way. At this point, we just don't know. You said apparent non, non life threatening for the officers. Do you have a specific condition for them? Are they in critical condition? Or? Right now, no, we don't. It, none of them are in critical condition right now. Um, so uh, we are in contact with them to determine, again, the one that just went into surgery. So I don't want to go into details uh, out of respect for them and their family right now. I want to give them some time and also until we can get further details on their condition. But right now, I can report that they are not life threatening, none of them. Yeah, well, right now, you know, we're having somber moments because, again, lives were lost. But we know that this is what they do every day. I mean, you wake up in the morning and you put that uniform on and you don't know what the day is going to hold for you. Um, just like those victims that went to work today. But these officers know that it's, uh, you know, this is the, the thing that they are willing to accept. And so there's a lot of somberness knowing that lives lost. As I was talking to a few officers, they said they felt like they saved a lot of lives today, but they're going to be concentrating on the four, um, on the, 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 the five victims that they, they couldn't. And so right now there's a, a, a on one hand, a sigh of relief that our officers are going to be okay, but on the other hand, you know, that lives were lost. That's always a tough thing. So the first two were shot arriving at the plant. Were the other three shot and wounded during the firefight with the suspect? All of the officers that were shot were within the first five minutes of arrival, and we believe that that pushed the offender inside further, and, and that's probably where he uh, went to retreat. And so as we brought more officers in, and that was eventually, again, uh, over a vast, vast building that they were finally uh, able to locate the they offender. Were all shot outside? Not all of them, no. The officers, no. Um, the, the first few responders were shot. I, th I believe the first one was shot outside, and the rest were shot just as they were starting to enter and to, to try to confront the offender. Is he wearing body armor? I don't know that. The press release uh, details a regional law enforcement response and talks about the Naperville Police Department entering with Aurora PD. How many agencies were involved? I genuinely don't know. Does anybody have a number off the top of their head? I, I mean, I know that we had 13 teams going in at one point, but I'm not sure. I know there were hundreds of law enforcement, but at this point, I'm not, I don't have an exact number to tell you. As I said, when I looked across and saw, and, and just in, in the middle of the incident and saw the sea of uniforms, all different uniforms representing um, all different agencies and, and different organizations, federal, state, local, um, I, again, everybody runs towards the gunfire, and uh, that was the whole point, was to try to keep our citizens safe. Can you describe what the police are doing inside the, the building right now? Perhaps? Sure. Right now, they're collecting evidence. They're trying to determine, just based on the questions that you asked, how many rounds were fired, um, you know, what kind of weapon was it, um, you know, things like that. So they're all, it's all evidence collection at this point. Did you say anything at all to responding officers? Not that I'm aware of. Is there any idea of how long, I mean, obviously Pratt is going to have to remain closed for the foreseeable future. Is there any idea of how long that would be? I cannot answer on their behalf. I genuinely do not know. Is there any struggle with the SWAT team or with the shooting incident? A struggle, <coughs> meaning? Struggle. I, not that I'm aware of. I know that uh, when they uh, located him, he engaged them in fire first, and, and they returned fire. Do you know if any other employees were being terminated? I am unaware of that.
Oh, the gender of the victims? Uh, at, at this, I believe the gender of the victims are all male. Um, and, is, and then you asked about the police officers. Uh, there was a response from, from uh, police officers of both genders, both male and female, uh, but the ones that, that were shot uh, are all male officers. Okay, we'll take the last question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead Megan. I am not exactly sure. Our preliminary reports indicate that they were shot first, and that's when people reported the shots fired, and then our officers came in to engage. Um, so I believe they were shot before our officers arrived. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks, folks. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, if you want, meet back here. We'll have another press briefing ready for you uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, okay? Thank you very much.